also that I have many Ruby friends in Taiwan. So really, I actually this is my first time to come here, and I'm really glad to come here. So let's start. Okay. Uh, first, the uh, who uh, is uh, the this talk's target? So maybe this talk is mainly for the Ruby who is interested in Ruby's performance. Uh, maybe the uh, from beginner to intermediate uh, level uh, technical talk, I think, and not not that deep. So please do not expect too much. And also the uh, who may be interested in remote procedure call, uh, uh, especially if you want to call Python library or the Julia library from Ruby, then uh, this talk uh, may be for you. Okay. And table of contents. Uh, I will uh, roughly talk about three sections. The first section uh, describes about the problem I had encountered uh, throughout my uh, challenges. And the uh, next section is about the 3x challenge. Actually, this is the part where I uh, did some effort and actually I uh, coded uh, and I created some gems and how I work around about that. And the last part is uh, why sort of meaning. Uh, uh, because the, throughout those 3x challenge, uh, that was uh, not complete so that uh, I have to uh, look further more deeply into the Ruby uh, MRI core so that uh, I, uh, throughout that process, uh, what I have found and uh, what was the problem uh, is uh, this part. Okay. So about the chapter one, a reality. So uh, let's start about talking uh, this simple one-liner program. So as you can see, uh, this program is really simple. Uh, so first, uh, assign 2.5 float value to the local variable x. And after that, the loops are n times. And after that, just print that value out. Okay? And if you actually, that this program can be runnable in your terminal. So if you are opening up your MacBook so that uh, maybe you can test it. If, anyways, uh, so if you run this one line of code, then uh, Ruby works really fast. It's no problem. Uh, just the execu execution time, board time, is just takes 1.13 uh, second. So next, uh, if I run the 100 times, so 10 times uh, more, then still fast, actually uh, faster. But this is just the uh, uh, measurement program. So uh, it's uh, uh, kind of the how do you say um, the あ、なんだろう、誤差。誤差、誤差があるんだろうね。えっとね。あ、サム、そう。え、あ、ウェルウェルウェルウェル。can the, from this, uh, I just increased the number of loops. Still almost the same, meaning Ruby is uh, fast enough to me, at least to me, uh, as long as the number of loops is the kind of the 10,000 or something. Right? Uh, for me, actually for me, it looks good. But the problem starts from here. Uh, so I increase the uh, number of loops more. So starts to increase like this, and like this, and like this. So as you can see, apparently uh, Ruby's performance uh, decreased radically. So for the huge number of loops, Ruby decreased its performance very radically. That's the problematic for me. Because why huge number of loops I need to compute? Because the, I did some the text classification processing meaning uh, which uh, do really simple calculation, but many, 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 many times, which is the common uh, pattern of computation for the scientific computing, I think. Okay. So let's say, so let's take another example. So how about Python, for example? Just an just a example. So this is the same program as the Ruby's one in Python. Then, this is the total result up to the 10,000 times. And it's still same level, meaning 
So okay, both Ruby and Python are good enough to me for smaller number of loops. But if I increase more uh, number of loops, then same symptoms are shown like this. Okay, actually in this diagram, Python is slower, but take note that this is not fair. I mean, uh, I, that, I don't want to offense the Python's performance or not, uh, something because the, it, it really varies, uh, depends on the, uh, uh, what system or what version is used. So this is not fair, but I just want to talk about the, the order of time, meaning order of time is really going huge. That's the fact, I think. So sadly, both uh, Ruby and Python are slow for huge number of loops. That's the that's part. OK, uh, let's talk about C. Uh, in my ex expression, C is uh, fastest. So the, what about C? C is this. You see, so fast. But what about many, uh, many number of loops? Let's see, like this. So she is ridiculously fast. So that's a fact. Okay. So okay, she is great. And now I introduce Julia, which is a relatively new uh, programming language. Language. Uh, how many of you know Julia programming language? Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So some of you doesn't know about Julia. So Julia is a dynamic programming language, and uh, it's designed for scientific computing and really the focused on the, its computation speed. So how about Julia? This is the same program as the last one. So Julia is the, the top line is the Julia. So OK, surprisingly, Julia looks slowest. But look, uh, if I increase the number of loops like this, like this, like this, so it's, a const it's like constant. So Julia is as fast as she for bigger number of loops. And uh, so OK, reason. Uh, this is just my guess. Uh, I have not uh, looked into further more, but uh, my guess is maybe the Julia, uh, since this benchmark is uh, based on the cold start benchmarking, so that uh, maybe from my guess, maybe Julia is not optimized for its the building up speed yet, since the Julia's version is still uh, version 0.5 is like this, I think. Anyways, the Julia is fast. So findings, in summary, Chapter one summary is this. So Ruby works reasonably, reasonably fast for smaller number of loops, uh, which is good for everyone. But the, for huge number of loops, it's adv advisable, advisable to consider to switch language, I think. And primary option would be using C because C is really fast. Or the, for example, I'm not sure, but the Golang or Rust uh, can be fast. I'm not sure. I, I don't take benchmark any, anymore. But Julia is also the language. But uh, at the same time, Julia is fast, which is really great, I think. OK, chapter two. So from those uh, research, uh, what uh, I had uh, challenged uh, is this part. OK. So given that performance issue, which option is the best to work around this? Uh, three options. So just to give up this issue and switch the languages anyway. Uh, that's the really simple and quick option for you. Uh, it, it may work for you. And the second option uh, would be make Ruby itself faster, which is really good for everyone. Uh, so if you are uh, interested in this, then maybe you can do that. Or the third option is make a gem to boost my Ruby program. That could be done. And the third option was uh, my first option to do. So uh, I did it. And the idea uh, came up with me uh, at first is the creating some transpiler and uh, create from Ruby code, just write Ruby code and transpile it to the Julia language because uh, Julia is dynamic uh, programming language and Ruby is also dynamic. So uh, I thought that uh, from dynamic uh, language to dynamic language is the, uh, simpler than the dynamic to static. So concept is like that. So create some transpire uh, can solve this problem. And, but the problem is that is that really possible to convert the Ruby code to Julia code? So let's look at the syntax. So sometimes it's hopeful because the Ruby and Julia have uh, similar uh, syntaxes in common. So the upper, upper program is the Ruby and the bottom is the Julia. Uh, the only difference is the 
the main job data for the Ruby is the uh, dot dot, and for the Julia, just use colon. So, so really the difference is the small. But uh, of course, sometimes it's not because, for example, Ruby can degree a class as you like. And, but the Julia doesn't have such kind of object-oriented concept, so that the, for that case, maybe I have to call some bridge, some something function or something uh, somehow, and maybe it would be awkward. So I'm not sure if that's a really good option or not. But anyway, I guess it. And although I, uh, at that time it wasn't sure if it's a uh, good solution for me. But uh, anyway, this is the result of the, what I, I've tested. And I have created the Julia Riza Ruby Gem, and, which is the program converter from Ruby to Julia. And uh, only, limited sub, only limited syntax are supported. So for example, that uh, some very, very limited through class, for class, six now, broad, in here, and in here. And also, array and link and hash are very limitedly supported, but not perfect. So to be honest, it's still under the development, but uh, some program can be converted. Example is like this. So the first is the minus 1.6, uh, the front value to the integer. Uh, in Ruby, is like that. And uh, if I pass that to the Julia writer, a Julia writer is a command line name for the uh, Julia writer. And then the Julia's the program uh, can be convert, uh, can be shown, right? And uh, the whole loop can be also converted. And this is the what to be conversion. Actually, the before I convert this, of course, the, I have to port the original what to pick dot uh, C program, uh, which is originally invented by Google uh, a few years ago, I think. And that was a really simple C program, I think, the thousands lines of code. So, uh, so that the convert uh, what to fix that C program to the Ruby program was really easy and fun. And so I have already the what to fix Ruby program, and, and I converted to the Julia. Is uh, the outcome is this, and it's really working. Okay, so now I've got the uh, what to make Ruby program already in the Julia language. But uh, how to run a Julia program for, from Ruby is next pro problem because, for example, if you simply think about that, then you can run the extender function as like this for that spawn or the anyway. Uh, you can call extender program, but obviously it's uh, not a good solution because you cannot the uh, uh, take the result value uh, as a Ruby value, right? So those kind of the interactive part is not supported. So to support those uh, problem, I created the uh, inter-process communication Ruby gem uh, I have created. So which is named the virtual module, uh, which is the um, IPC module generator. Uh, maybe uh, I can show you first in the source code. So this is a sample usage of the virtual module. And the virtual module is a module generator so that the first line, uh, if you call the virtual module of new, then uh, by calling that method, then Julia background process is booted up and starts the idle. And uh, virtual module of new uh, just create, uh, just return the instance of the module class so that uh, at, from in this source code, the JL uh, local variable have just the uh, module, so that because that it's module, so you can include that JL local variable. After the include, then you can uh, send any message to that JL local variable, right? So that uh, you can call something like this. So that now you can call any any uh, Julia packages. Uh, as you want, like this, so clustering. So clustering is not uh, Ruby uh, embedded class, right? Built in, not, it's not built in Ruby's class, but uh, it's uh, Julia. And you can call the Julia, uh, in this case, clustering.kmins function, uh, you are calling from Ruby. And also you are passing the values from Ruby RAM. And the value conversion is done by message pack, so that the, it's automatically converted to the Julia's uh, Julia runs value. Okay, 
but the point is the uh, data type which is not supported by message pack because message pack does support only basic data types like integer or like string or array can be supported but uh, of course the in julia uh, julia or uh, there is many data that data types such as for example in this uh, program data type uh, is used by cluster in package but uh, it's not supported in Ruby, of course. So that uh, in this case, our local variable just keep the speed module, uh, which points to that uh, class object uh, possess in uh, Julia process. And using that R variable, uh, you can pass to the clustering package again. And if that Julia function returns the very basic data type, then you can retrieve those values in Ruby's uh, user bar. So in this case, you just pass the R uh, local variable to the clustering assignment function, then you will get the list of the result, uh, which is the resulted by the k-means function. And this is the re uh, result, actually the result of the k-means clustering uh, down by Julia, and you can now the list of the R uh, values in Ruby world, so that you can use this result in Ruby world. So, which is at least to me, which is, which is really useful. So, next example is uh, about the Python case. So, Python uh, nowadays uh, is commonly used as a um, like machine learning or the uh, deep learning uh, world, right? And if you want to use those kind of the packages, uh, uh, you have to write some Python code. But uh, since I'm a Ruby, I, I like Ruby so that I want to Ruby as much as possible. I want to write Ruby code as much as, as, much as possible so that uh, I created this. So in this way, uh, uh, you can even code Python packages. Okay. And also, you can even uh, define the custom uh, definition using Julializer because the, you can write the Ruby code, and you have we have the transpiler from Ruby to Julia, so that uh, you can do even do like this. So write some custom module in Ruby, but which is the uh, converted in background, and so so virtually uh, you run that function. Uh, wrote in, written in Ruby, but works in the other language. This is the design concept. More details can be found at the, this source code, uh, this, the list of source code. So I will upload this uh, presentation file later on so that you can see if you're interested in. And so the, let's see the outcome. So uh, was the root problem has been fixed or not? Is the uh, our intention right? So let's see. So I created, but uh, it's that it's really slow, right? Up to the ten thousand of loops, uh, it's slowest. So it looks not good, but uh, of course Julia. Uh, of course, this is because of Julia, because Julia is the uh, boot up time problem, so that it's. Uh, basically slow, and uh, so this is the problem, I think. But uh, as the number of loops gets bigger, like this, like this, so f if you want to uh, do a huge number of loops, then as Julia was, so for this problem, uh, this virtual module can uh, work for me. So it looks the virtual module can fix this problem. And okay, since this was the, just the simple uh, program like this, and uh, let's think, let's use this in real world example. So using word to back text classification uh, algorithm, and what will happen is this. Um, as you can see, so. Can you see that uh, the top of line, the blue line, is the original C, and it's really fast, fastest actually. And the second line is the uh, Ruby with virtual module, and the third one, the green line, is the MRI. So most of the cases, it became faster. Actually, 
uh, promote on this guy. But the problem is still there because the, so in the sense of making pure B what the big program uh, more than three x faster was possible. But the problem next problem is compared to the original C performance, uh, then it's still far slower than C. It's already faster, fast faster than the MRI only. But even with virtual module, uh, well, uh, compared with C, uh, it's still slow. So that's why I have to, uh, I, I needed uh, to investigate further more about the MRI. So why it's still slow? Okay, this is the last chapter. So what, what part of the source code works slow? Uh, so I, uh, at the, in the in the first hand, uh, I have investigated about that, and I have used the RubyProf. Uh, it's really popular, right? Uh, RubyProf is handy, a popular first code profiler for MRI, and you can just use this uh, gem install RubyProf. And result was like this. So okay, from that you can see the top of the uh, cost uh, time is consumed by integer up to method, and after that, the fix fix num uh, bigger uh, method. Okay, so we understand the, the top to service method, but uh, what is happening under the hood is still not yet clear, so that uh, we have to look deep into more about the uh, virtual machine or C level source code. So if you look at the, okay, let's say, let's first look at the virtual machine. So you can see uh, virtual machine, how does the uh, virtual machine works? Uh, you can. Uh, it's really pretty easy. Just uh, create some this kind of code. Then you can disassemble the uh, uh, instruction <coughs> sets. So this is the result. And if you want to know much about this, these instructions, maybe uh, Ruby under the microscope. A uh, very nice, good book to understand the, how Yarb works. Uh, and this is recommended. And, but anyways, uh, I don't explain uh, details about here, but the, the problem is, the, okay, so we now know that each instruction, so uh, about this loop, about this simple loop, uh, in the virtual machine world, how that is expressed is already clarified, but the, uh, not yet clarified is that what instruction is slow or what instruction works fast. So what exactly is happening under the hood is still the problem. So that I have uh, created some simple, really simple tiny tool uh, which can provide the other behavior, behavior. So this, which is the just the detrace based uh, functionality, so that I did not uh, very much change things because I just use uh, detrace APIs. And uh, but anyways, you can see uh, with this YARB profiler, then you can use like this, and then result with like this, so that you can see uh, which instruction can uh, took time, uh, and which uh, instruction is slow, like that. So in from this profile thing, uh, we got to know that uh, opt plus uh, instruction was the slowest. So more than 50% slower than other instructions. So that if you want to improve performance, then maybe uh, what you should uh, start to uh, look is maybe opt plus instruction. Okay. So for more metrics and features, still on the development, but to be continued. So anyway, this is the last chapter, so your turn. So that's everything uh, I've already challenged. And also, this is, it, it's of course open for you to challenge with this. So why not attempt by yourself towards Ruby three times three or the even five X Ruby ride? Okay, <coughs> thank you so much. So that's everything. So, do we have any questions? Any questions? No questions at all? So, um, you tried on G 
Julius yen. Um, if you try it on 100 yen, the lowest would be something to choose is Julia. Ah, okay, the question was uh, why I choose the Julia VM, uh, right? And have you tried other VMs? Aha, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. Hmm. Good question. Um, actually, other VM, there is many programming languages, and <coughs> I have not tried very much. Because the, uh, mm, for example, uh, mm, my point is that I wanted to create the transpiler from dynamic language to the dynamic language, and um, of course, if I use static programming language, then uh, that program uh, would be faster. But the uh, uh, conversion, since the Ruby. Uh, in Ruby, we doesn't statically declare the type right, so that uh, we don't have much information to use uh, comp use the type, type data. So that uh, I thought ideally from dynamic language to dynamic language would be um, much simpler. So that uh, my thought was that so at, uh, just look for some dynamic languages. So there's still many dynamic languages, for example, the PHP or Perl or the, any other. And uh, from those uh, choices, okay, why why that was Julia? Uh, one reason is the hmm, hmm, from maybe the biggest reason is the curious, since the. Uh, some a few engineers around me uh, says that the uh, Julia is uh, upcoming uh, really fast language, so that I wanted to test uh, it, and that's the biggest reason. And the another reason is, well, um, ah, okay, I have actually tested already PHP and Python, but uh, uh, among those testing, uh, Julia is still faster. So that uh, from my quick test, Julia is Julia was fast already, and Julia is also the interested to me. So that I uh, choose Julia. Okay, thank you very much for your sharing. Let's give a round of applause for Watson. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.